Hello, hello, welcome back to another Frugal Friday Live. Um, just while you guys are jumping on, if you are new to following me and uh, you've just stumbled across this video, my name is Nikki Beale. I'm a frugal living and family finance blogger and I'm all about sharing tips to help you budget better, demolish your debts, uh, save like you've never saved before and you know what? <laughs> still have a little bit of fun along the way because that is super, super important. And today I'm going to share with you guys my three biggest tips to help you save more on your grocery budget. Um, but before we get too far into this video, if you are catching this video live, um, I would really love it if you would jump into the comments and just say good day. Just let me know that you guys are there. I really do love having the opportunity to chat with you guys. Um, that's pretty much why I do these videos. Uh, I'm incredibly nervous actually <laughs> going live. So, um, you know, I'm really forcing myself this year to step outside of my comfort zone. I want to go live every single Friday um, and be here to have a chat with you guys, but also share some tips that we have definitely found has helped us on our journey to not only uh, paying off all of our debt and becoming debt free, but staying debt free. So that is my main goal this year in 2020 is to be here every single week sharing tips and tricks with you guys that really do help. Um, and we know that because I only share things that have actually worked for us. And I think that's super, super important. So. Um, if you have any questions or any topics or anything that you're getting stuck on, um, if you could let me know in the comments, um, ask away, ask any questions that you have about uh, budgeting and frugal living or paying off debt, any of those types of topics. It really does help me uh, come up with new content for you guys because I know the sorts of things that you are looking for, that you need help for, um, and it gives me ideas of things to, to blog about, um, do, these, um, do these Facebook Live videos, um, and yes, I do have a YouTube channel as well, which I was almost just about to say there, but anyways, um, as you can see, yeah, I do tend to get a little bit nervous, so I talk really, really fast. I do apologize for that and it's one of the things in 2020 I'm really working on getting better at which is not speed talking while I'm on <laughs> camera. <laughs> All right so let's jump in, let's get to it. Um, today I want to share with you my three best tips to help you save more money at the grocery store. Now I did actually just do a blog post on this where I shared 10 tips. I'm not going to go into all 10 tips today, I'm just going to share the three best tips with you guys. These are the ones that I think really move the needle the most. So I think as um, a frugal living blogger, like I follow a lot of other people who share tips and tricks on frugal living. That's how I learned a lot of these things that are, I'm sharing with you guys. But one of the things that I have noticed is that I think that there are two types of tips out there. There are little, what I'm going to call macro tips, the um, micro tips, sorry, little micro tips that move the, the needle a little bit. And all of these things help. They certainly do. And you'll see a lot of frugal living bloggers like to focus on these little micro tips. You know, we're going to save just a couple of dollars here. We're going to save 50 cents here. One of the things that I think we need to focus on is those actually the, the, the opposite of that, the big macro tips, the things that really, really move the needle in a big way. I like to share both because I, I do think that it's important um, to make some big changes, but also, you know, if we can tweak and we can improve and, and we can s squeeze a little bit more out of the budget, then that's awesome. But all we ever do is focus on those little micro tips. We feel like we're putting so much effort all the time into saving money where we're going without, we're giving up, we're scrimping and we're saving so much effort into these little micro tips that don't necessarily give us big returns. So today, what I want to share with you guys is the three really big movers for us when it came to our grocery budget. Now to put things into perspective for you, 
one of the biggest changes that we made to our budget was actually our, our grocery spending. When we first started our debt-free journey, and for those of you who are uh, new to following me um, and you don't know our story, we paid off $73,000 in just 22 months, um, all on a combined family income of $77,000 a year. Um, and uh, on top of that, you know, we, we'd we spent almost two decades being in debt and thinking that that's pretty much just the way things were. That's just, we were middle class Aussies, we're always going to have car loans and credit card debts and personal loans. That's just the way that, that the cookie crumbled. Uh, but we actually started Danny J's Find the Money Project, came across Dave Ramsey, went down that rabbit hole, um, came across Scott Pape, the Barefoot Investor. And basically, uh, in the last five years, we have really turned our lives around and we are no longer those Aussies who believe that you know, middle class Aussie family always has to struggle with debt. Uh, we actually paid off all of our debt pretty quickly, even though we'd been lugging it around for quite a while with us. Uh, but we've actually gone on to stay out of debt, which is, I think, uh, sometimes perhaps even more of an achievement than, than just paying off your debt. And that's not to underestimate how much of an achievement it is to pay off all of your debt. That is a really, really big thing. Uh, we sacrificed a lot to do that, but I also know coming out in the other side and living that debt-free life, um, it certainly is something that you need to be committed to every single day is, is staying debt-free and continuing to live that type of lifestyle so that you can build up your savings, save up an emergency fund and, and pay cash to do the things that you want. So I'm getting a little bit off topic here, but basically, so uh, the start of our journey uh, we sat down and we really started to learn how to budget. Budgeting wasn't something that we'd ever done before. And one of the main things that I struggled when it com came to budgeting was I was really good at budgeting for all of our fixed expenses, um, like our bills and things like that, because they had a, an exact amount that was due. They had a date that was really easy. What I really struggled with was our variable spending, in particular our grocery spending, because... I had no idea how much what we felt like eating that week was going to cost us. So um, I would budget without actually putting any boundaries in for our variable expenses because I really honestly thought it was sort of impossible. When we did the exercise of going back through our, our budget and our spending and tallying up how much we um, were actually spending on all of the different categories, I was really, really shocked to find out how much we actually spent at the grocery store. It was our third highest expense. And if I included uh, eating out as well as our grocery budget, oftentimes it was actually more expensive than our rent, which was a bit of a scary um, situation for us to be in. I really honestly didn't think we were spending that much at the grocery store. Um, I used to do a big shop one week and a little shop the next week and then do a couple of top-up shops. So it never seemed like a really excessive amount until I actually sat down and looked at it. Um, and I looked at it across three months and was blown away by how much we were spending. On average, um, this is about five years ago, um, we were actually spending somewhere around um, $1,100 to $1,200 a month on groceries. And we actually managed to cut that back to six hundred dollars a month we literally shaved five to six hundred dollars a month off our grocery budget by learning how to plan better so i'm not saying that if you follow these tips you're going to see those sorts of results because it really is going to depend on how much you are overspending at the grocery store um, and how much you can trim back how much you want to trim back uh, these tips don't take into consideration any lifestyle um, or dietary needs or anything like that. Um, but it's okay because you're not necessarily looking for the exact same results as what we are. What, what you're looking at is ways to trim back and not overspend at the grocery store with the behaviours that you're already doing. So one of the things that you can do are those little um, micro things like I was saying earlier. You can look for your specials. You can put some things in place like... Uh, not spending more than $3.50 a kilo on fruit and, and all of those sorts of tips and they're great and they're helpful but they don't create really big 
change and really big results. The three things that we found made the biggest difference to us with our grocery shopping was number one, weekly meal planning. If you're not already doing this, um, you know, you really, really need to give it, give it a go. The best way for you to plan and know exactly what you are going to need for the week so that you can only buy what you're going to need for the week is to know what you're going to eat that week. And the easiest way to do that is to meal plan. And I resisted meal planning for a very long time because it really seemed just so complicated and hard and I couldn't get my head around it. And I would sit down literally with a blank piece of paper and stare at it and have no inspiration for what we were going to eat all week. It was just, just nothing would come. And I realized that I was going about meal planning all wrong. I was starting with a blank slate, literally a blank piece of paper and trying to fill it in. And the other thing that I'd find is if I ever did actually fill it in, the meals that I were picking were so random and had nothing to do with each other or, or any of the things that I already had in the pantry. They were usually inspired by somebody else's meal plan or trying to eat um, a nice, healthy, balanced diet or something like that. So what I want you guys to do is to stop pro approaching meal planning that way and start with what you already have. Uh, I say this all the time, shop your fridge, freezer and pantry first. Sit down, work out what meals you can already come up with or what meals are like just almost there. Maybe you just need to pick up one or two ingredients and you've got a meal and start there. Start with what you already have. It's going to do two things. One, you're going to use up the things that you've already paid for. You've already outlaid the money for these things. We may as well use them up and use them up before they go bad is a really good thing. The other thing that you're going to do if you start with what you already have, when you go to the grocery store, you sort of have an idea of what is already in your fridge, freezer and pantry and hopefully you're not going to double up and buy um, excess of things that you already have and that you're not using because that's a bit of a money pit. Um, stockpiling and just picking up things randomly and picking up things that we think that we might need without knowing whether or not we need them um, can end up being a huge waste of money. So start with what you already have. Start with a weekly meal plan and to make things easier with your meal plan. I actually have a free guide if you want to go download it. Um, it's over at nikkibeal.co forward slash meal planning success. I will pop the link uh, into this the description of this video once we're finished um, and you can go and grab my quick start guide. But my best tip for meal planning is start with what you already have, create uh, weekly dinners around the things that you already have and then when it comes to breakfast, lunch and snacks, our approach is to keep it simple. We literally have two um, ingredient choices for breakfast. You can do what you want with them, but we have wheat bix and oats. Um, so the options are porridge if it's cold, we can make overnight oats or muesli or smoothies or, or whatever. Uh, lunches, again, we have like two options. We keep things really, really simple. Our snacks are fruit, so I'll pick up whatever fruit is um, on special at the supermarket. But keep things simple, limit your choices throughout the week. But week to week, you can alternate your choices. So you're not eating the same thing in and out every single week, but each week you have a limited number of choices. It's just seven days. It's not going to be the end of the world. And it actually makes things a heap easier. All right. My second big tip, this was a huge mover for us, um, is what I've we've dubbed the $10 dinner rule. Now, I actually have a blog post that explains all of this in a heap more detail, but what we found the most expensive part of our grocery budget was, was our dinners. So we decided to cap our dinners at basically $70 for the week. So I will try to pick dinners, pick seven dinners that will average out to $10 a meal for us. Now we're a family of five. Uh, we do have two teenage boys who eat like you know, food's going out of fashion. Um, but we have found that this works really, really well. How much you decide to make your 
ten dollar dinner rule be? It could be eight dollars, it could be fifteen dollars, twelve dollars. It doesn't really matter. The point is that you are actually picking an amount that you want to sort of cap your spending at for that particular part of your grocery budget. And I say average because we will have some meals that are more expensive than ten dollars as long as it's balanced with some meals that are cheaper than ten dollars across the board so across the week we're actually balancing out a couple of fun a little bit more expensive maybe a bit more extravagant meals with some really cheap meals and then that way we're sort of not always penny pinching we are enjoying some stuff but we're also balancing it with some really cheap meals uh, and if you are looking for more tips on how to do that like I said I have a blog post that actually explains the whole thing but I've shared, been sharing this tip for about a year now and um, the amount of people that have actually emailed me or messaged me or DM'd me and said that this one tip has helped rein in their grocery budget so much is crazy. So the only thing that, uh, like extra advice that I'm going to give you guys about this tip is um, give it a go at $10 and see how that fits with your budget but don't be afraid to change any of uh, these amounts. With any of the tips that I share with you guys, it really is about finding that balance, that sweet spot for your family. So uh, you can use us as an example and sort of sit down and work out from there how much you want to change it. So maybe if you've got a smaller family, maybe if you're a family um, with two really younger kids, maybe you'll drop that back to $8. Maybe if you've got uh, older kids or if you've got dietary requirements that um, require you to spend a little bit extra on some ingredients, maybe you're going to increase that to, to $12 or $15. The actual dollar amount doesn't matter. There's no perfect um, amount that you guys need to work towards, but it's more about having some ways to sort of contain our spending so that it doesn't just keep blowing out. If we've got a goal to work towards, we're always going to be much better at coming in closer to that than literally walking around the supermarket without a plan, without any idea and just throwing stuff in the trolley and hoping that when we get home there's going to be something we can make a meal out of. Um, Alright, so tip number three is it really all of these things are the really big movers for us so in our weekly meal planning and it sort of goes hand in hand with the ten dollar meal um, ten dollar dinner rule sorry and the third one is um, shopping with a list and using a calculator so like I said in the beginning of this video like we've been doing this for a number of years now and we've really found that these tips help but I can tell you I guarantee you that if I go shopping next week and I do not take a list and I do not use my calculator I'm going to overspend even though we've been meal planning I might have the meal plan with me I've, I've got an idea in my mind how much my dinners are going to cost and I'm using that $10 dinner rule and I'm balancing it out across the week I can do all of those things and I can focus on some of those other frugal living tips that you might have heard, like I'm focusing on the, the fruit and veg that's under $3.50 a kilo, whatever other tips that it is. But if I don't have a list, if I'm not shopping with a list and I'm not using my calculator to add it up as I go around the shops, guaranteed to go over budget. So shopping with a list and using my calculator as I shop has been probably one of it has been. It's one of the biggest things that have really moved the needle for us when it comes to sticking to our grocery budget. And it's great because I've got a list and oftentimes we're buying the same sorts of things um, repeatedly. So I sort of know how much they cost because I'm actually taking note of the price on the shelf. And as it goes into my trolley, I'm putting it into my calculator. So I'm a lot more aware of how much these items are costing us. I generally sort, I know um, how much, um, so breakfast cereal or whatever is going to cost us. And I can look as I'm going around the supermarket and putting things into my trolley, I'm keeping tabs on it. If I have a little bit excess uh, grocery budget money left over, I know that I can use that to buy some specials, but I know exactly how much I've got left. I know that if I'm getting close to my grocery budget which for us we work off um, $300 a fortnight uh, and I try to sort of keep it to $150 a week but I know that I can ebb and flow a little bit in that I can spend a little bit more in the first week and cut back in the second week or vice versa but it's $300 for the fortnight and that's it once it's gone it's gone and I'm done 
So as I'm going around and um, I'm adding things into my trolley, um, if I'm getting close to my grocery budget, I'm going to start really thinking value-wise what's in there, what do I need to put back, um, what do I still need to get that I can't do without. And it really makes you make decisions then and there up and down the aisles rather than just putting it all in your trolley, getting to the cash register and going, oh, gosh, that was a bit more than what I was expecting. That's okay. I'm just going to swipe it on my card and I'll worry about that later. <laughs> Um, so those three things really have really moved the needle for us. Um, just going to, oh, hey, Elizabeth, how are you? So lovely to hear from you. Thank you for popping in and saying hello. Elizabeth says, um, I need to do a list and take a calculator and also don't take the kids. Yeah, maybe we should put in a tip number four. <laughs> um, I definitely find that shopping with the list and using the calculator. I mean, all of us are walking around these days with a smartphone, or well, most of us are. Um, and if we're not, seriously, dig out the old Casios, people. <laughs> I've done that before, <laughs> um, where I've actually walked around literally with a calculator. But we've all got, you know, like, um, if, you, if you don't have a smartphone with a calculator in all seriousness just take a calculator with you and add it up it will make such a difference but the list too um, so what I list out and this might you might find this helpful but what I list out is obviously I've got the meal plan I'll take a photograph of that because it's usually on a whiteboard I will write a paper list of all the things that I need to buy to 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 fill in what we don't have but the other sneaky thing that I will do is take a photo of your fridge and your freezer and your pantry so that if you're at the shops and you're actually wondering oh do I need that you can have a quick look and you can see maybe not everything that you've got but you can get a good idea and you can see how much room you've got left too so you know we've all got phones that have got you know these capabilities let's start using them to save some money um, so they are the big three movers for us. They really did make a huge difference. Um, you can go and check out my blog post where I do share, I actually share 10 tips. Um, and so some of those are those big uh, macro results. Some of them are the little micro results. And like I said, they're important too. Um, you know, any way that we can save a few dollars does add up over the long run. But I don't think there's any point in just focusing on those little things. Like there's no point in just focusing on saving a couple of dollars on your groceries if you're shopping without a plan. If you don't have any idea how you're going to use these things and bring all of these ingredients and items together in a meal. So just to recap, if you guys are just jumping on now, the three big tips, the, the big movers for us when it comes to saving money on our grocery budget were weekly meal planning, absolutely huge money saver for us um, and then coupling that with the $10 dinner rule like I said I do have a blog post that explains all of that you can go and check that out and see how that works and then of course shopping with a list and using a calculator you'll be surprised at the difference that it really does make um, and you'll find that if you're working on I think those big movers those things that are going to get you really big results then you can start to implement some of those other tips that are going to help you squeeze a little bit more out, save a little bit more, um, and really rein in that grocery budget and put some extra money back into your bank account. Um, so if you've had, if you've never done meal planning before and you're like, I just don't even know where to start, Nikki, this is just too much, um, I do have a quick start meal plan quick start meal planning guide I will link that into the video description once um, we're finished here today because I didn't do that before I actually started the video but I will put a direct link into that a direct link for the blog post for the $10 dinner meal um, and yesterday's blog post which gave you guys 10 tips to help you save on your grocery money grocery budget sorry I will link to that as well um, and you know what, while we're here, I may as well just tell you guys as well, if you are looking for more ways to save money um, and put some more money back into your budget or you're just starting on your debt-free journey and you don't even know where to start, um, on Sunday we are kicking off another round of the $1,000 challenge, which is an email-based um, crash course in making your 
money behave basically it is the seven steps that we took personally we use these steps um, to put our first thousand dollars in the bank for our mini emergency fund when we were just starting out on our debt-free journey uh, and we basically had we, we didn't have two dollars to rub together so these were the tips that we used to get started paying off all of our debt um, if you are new to following me and you don't know our story, we did pay off $73,000 worth of debt in just 22 months um, and we didn't rob a bank or <laughs> win lotto or anything like that. We just did really simple basic stuff like meal planning and saving on our grocery budget. Uh, we learned how to budget properly uh, and quite a few other bits and pieces and I share seven really big tips in the thousand dollar challenge if you would like to join us for the next round like i said we are kicking off on sunday and i will put that link in the description box as well so you can join us in the thousand dollar challenge and get the challenge emails all right guys um i will be back next friday with another friday live video um, and I would absolutely love it if you could join me again then too. If you guys have any um, questions or you have any topics or anything like that that you would like me to cover, please let me know because I really do, um, I love coming up with content that actually helps you guys. So when you ask a question or you, um, you, you let me know that there's a topic or something that you're struggling with, um, you know, it gives me the opportunity to sit down, either write a blog post or create a video or do something to help you guys get more bang for your buck so you can live the life that you want to. All right, I hope to catch you guys again next Friday. We'll be back at 12 o'clock Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Um, and until then, have a lovely week. I hope to see you guys over in the challenge group. All right, I'll catch you later. Bye.